So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at the second part of the speaking exam, which is the photo card. The photo card and the role play, the first two sections of the speaking exam, you will get time before your exam to prepare it. So it's important that you know how to use this time effectively in the exam. The photo card itself will last up to two minutes for foundation candidates and it will last up to three minutes for higher candidates. When I say that, it means that as long as your teacher asks the last question before the two minutes is up, that means whatever you say will be counted. If your teacher asks you the last question on two minutes and one second or two seconds, then that information doesn't count. So it's important that you control the length of your answers as well and you manage your time effectively. So the first thing you'll notice is that you have the card like this. Your teacher will assign you the card. You can't choose the card. The reason for that is you get to pick your uh, theme of choice for the general conversation exam. And during the exam, you have got to cover all three themes from the AQA School of Study. So to do that, you get prescribed one general conversation module and you get prescribed the photo card. You'll always have a photo card that'll look like this. I'll give you a little bit of information at the top regarding what it's about. So job, career, choices and ambitions. Three questions will appear at the bottom, but during the course of the exam, you'll be, uh, you'll be asked five questions. So unlike the role play where there's one surprise question, this time there's two surprise questions. So bear that in mind. You'll always be presented with a photograph and the first question will always be K I in my photo, so that shouldn't be a surprise. So I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through how I would go about preparing it. As I said last time, these cards do not write on the card in the exam. If you write on the card in the exam, or the candidates after you can't use it. So make sure you don't do that. Use the AQA notes paper. Like I said, I'm currently in lockdown, so I'm going to access to that. So I'm going to use my trusty little dot pad instead. So the first thing I would do is I would look at the photograph and I would write down some things that I can see in that photograph. So I'll start with own. Now my tip for this is don't spend too long on this. The reason why I'm saying don't spend too long on it is because once you've set the amount, right amount of ticks, you can't get more mocks for that question. Okay, I'll show you what I mean in a second. So that's what's in the first. I've identified what's in the photo. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to translate all of my questions into English. So I've translated my three questions. I've got ¿Qué hay en la foto? ¿Cuál es tu trabajo ideal? So what's your ideal job? ¿Qué trabajo no te gustaría hacer? ¿Por qué? Be careful on these little questions. Sometimes they'll chuck in something that you don't, a negative. And that does catch a lot of people out. So just make a point of making sure that you do translate that accurately. Okay? So I've translated my questions. The next thing I want to do now is I want to start using the sentences that I've been given, the questions I've been given, to turn them into sentence starters. So what I mean by that is, ¿Qué hay en la foto? I can look at this sentence and I can unpick this sentence and use it to actually start my answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write number one. Like I said last time, like here's an example of an interrogative, a question word. So we can't lift that, we can't use that in our response because it's, it forms the question. However, if I look at the rest of the sentence, hay en la foto, there is in the photo. I can rejig that word order a bit to start my sentence off and begin my sentence. A logical place to start would be, in the photo, there is. So that's how I would start that off. En la foto. Ay. Perfect. And I can put some of these nouns that I wrote earlier on after that, and that would make complete sense. So the next one. ¿Cuál es su trabajo ideal? Like, ¿Cuál? What or which? I can't use that, it's an interrogative. But, es tu trabajo ideal, is your ideal job. I can use that, but I'm going to have to change this to, to be about myself. Because I'm not saying what is your ideal job, I'm not saying what my ideal job is. So, I'm going to start with my ideal job is, so I'm changing the to, to me, and lifting the rest. And I can take that and run with it from there. The last one, ¿Qué trabajo no te gustaría hacer? ¿Por qué? Again, that ¿Qué? I can't lift because it's an interrogative. It's a question word. Trabajo, I can. No te gustaría hacer. I can, but I'm going to have to change the te gustaría hacer to me gustaría hacer. And remember, it's a negative, so I'm going to start with no. Now, I'm not going to say I would not like to do. I'd probably say I would not like to be. 
So, rather than saying actor, I'm going to say self. So just to run over what I've done so far. The first thing I've done is I've looked at the photograph and I've identified some items that are in that photograph. The second thing I've done is I've translated my sentences into English, my questions. And the third thing, I've used the questions that I've been given to give me my sentence starters. What you can do after that is you can then start threading together your answers. Now, a tip. In the exam, this is marked per tick. Now, for each sentence that you give, you're given a tick. So, for instance, I could write my first answer. In fact, let me write my first answer for you. There we go. What I want to do now is I want to show you how this is marked and the reason why really you don't need to be too sophisticated in this question and you don't want to write too much and this will help you, especially foundation candidates, because two minutes I've found for foundation isn't a long time. This can help you keep your answer in check. Now, you're marked with a tick if you use a verb and a correct piece of information. So basically a sentence. If you add a little bit of extra information on without a verb, you're given a little dash. If you use an opinion, you're given an up. If it hasn't got a verb, so you're saying um, KY. If you give an opinion that contains a verb, such as me gusta, opinion with a circle. Justification with a verb, and just J with a circle. Okay, so we're only gonna look at the positive ones. So I'll give you an example. This first one. In la foto, hay un hombre. I've got a verb there, hay. I would get a tick for that. And it makes sense. There is a man, y un chico. That un chico is an extra bit of information added to the previous. En la foto hay un hombre. Then the photo, there's a man. Therefore, we'll just get a dash. En la foto hay unas gafas. I've got my verb there. It's a complete sentence. So I've got two ticks. And the last one, en la foto hay tres chicas. There's my three ticks. Now, the reason why three is the, a really important number is that the mark scheme says for both foundation and for higher that in three out of the five questions you need to use you need to be given three ticks you need to give one opinion and you need to give one justification that combination would give you full marks so what i could have is i could have something like this so imagine this is my questions one two three four five like i said earlier on four and five are surprise questions so we don't know what they're going to be yet if I said, en la foto hay un chico, en la foto hay una chica, en la foto hay unas gafas. There's my three ticks. In the next one, if I get a tick, an opinion, a justification, that's fine. Third one, I might get three ticks. And I might only be able to give one sentence for the fourth question and the fifth question. But I've answered all my questions and I've got three ticks and three answers. This opinion, this justification also count as a tick. So that's why I'm saying I've got three ticks and three answers. That could get me into the top bracket of marks. So it's not actually that hard, okay? So my advice is write a sentence on each line like I've just done down there. Don't give too much information. That Yun Chico doesn't necessarily get me another tick. In fact, it doesn't get me another tick. So do I need it? Not necessarily. It can be as straightforward as that. Notice as well, I've repeated en la foto hay, en la foto hay, en la foto hay. There's nothing that says that I can't do that. There's nothing that's going to get penalised for doing that. Higher candidates, however, if you're a higher candidate and you're pushing for your top end marks, I'll be shaking it up a bit. En la foto hay. En la foto se puede ver. En la foto puedo ver. Okay, so just to shake it up a little bit more for higher foundation, just keep this nice, simple, formulaic answer and it'll do you, it'll serve you well. I'm going to follow that pattern. I'm going to give three sentences for my second and three sentences for my third and I'm looking for an opinion and a justification in one of them and I'm looking at this last one I would not like to be that's lending itself to an opinion and a justification so to my second question then I'm just going to quickly look at it I'm going to go through my tick test so mi trabajo ideal es ser profesor I've got a verb this all makes sense I'm happy with that so I'm giving myself a tick me gustaría ser profesor. So I would like to be a teacher. I'm going to count that as an opinion. Because it's something that's personal to me. Porque me gusta trabajar con niños. This porque is straight away is to tell me that I'm using a justification. So I'm saying why. So remember, our opinion and our justification also count as ticks. 
So in that question, I've got my three ticks. Perfect. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to move on to the last one. And the last one, like we said before, we've got to take into account this not. And that's really important. Now, I'm struggling for another reason of why I wouldn't like to be a footballer. So all I'm going to do to take myself out of this situation is think of another job that I wouldn't like to do. So I would also not like to be... Now, I can't think of a reason why at the minute, so I'm going to go back to my tick test to see if I can, if I've got enough ticks not to mention why. So, no me gustaría ser futbolista. That's an opinion, which also counts as a tick, remember? Porque odio hacer deporte. That's my justification, which also counts as a tick. También no me gustaría ser peluquero. That's an opinion. So, I've got my three ticks. Perfect. So, I've used my time really, really efficiently there. And I'm happy with that. Now, you'll get two surprise questions in the exam. My tip before you do the exam to really, really help you with this is, first things first, don't forget the magic phrase. Who are this? Repetir. That'll give you another bite to process the information and see if you can work it out. The second thing I would also recommend you do is you get some verbs in the to form, the you singular form. So I'll write myself a few down. If you struggle doing this, then what you can do is you can ask your teacher for a list. And just quiz yourself to see if you can turn them into the I form. And what that means is in the exam, you're going to be listening out for that to form and you'll know how to change it into the I form and you can just put anything that would loosely make sense afterwards and have a good shot at getting that right. Now, for higher candidates, like I said, you want to try and be a little bit more creative, a little, show a little bit more variety. Don't be too creative, though. That's what the general conversation is there for. But most importantly, just make sure your verbs are accurate and that you change things such as tu into mi. If you've got tienes, change into tengo. You've got to make it about yourself. Watch out for the negatives and also watch out for questions about other people. That's another thing. So you do want to say, mis, um, if you have a question that says, um, ¿Qué hacen tus amigos los fines de semana? You don't want to say voy al cine el fin de semana. Wrong. You want to say mis amigos van al cine los fines de semana, for instance. 